Hi, welcome to 2.5. We're talking about the product rule for differentiation. This is part of a three unit, three video set. You should also watch, sorry, I said 2.5. You should also watch 2.7 and 2.8. This is video 2.6, okay? So the basic thing we're gonna be talking about today is the product rule. I'm gonna spend a lot of time explaining this because when we get to 2.7 and 2.8, I'm gonna go through it very quickly. So if u and v are differentiable functions, this literally just means do I have two different functions? That's it. So we can call those u, v, we can call those f, g, you can call that m, q. It doesn't matter what letter sets you use as long as you know they are two different functions and that they are differentiable. Then we can use this equation that the derivative of u times v or f times g or function times function would be equal to u prime v plus v prime u. But how do we recognize that product rule? Well, you can either recognize it as what I just told you. We can remember our cumulative property, which tells me that u prime v is the same as v u prime, right? a times b is the same as b times a. I could see it as f and g, f prime g plus g prime f. But really what I want you to know is the concept. And the concept is the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. And as I said, it's easy peasy. So try not to make this too difficult. Memorize this. This is the concept. Say this as many times as you need to to understand this rule. So here's my numeric approach. Okay. And it can be broken down like this. But don't we know what this is? In essence, this is a table. That's what it is. I could have drawn this as a table and put, um, uh, what would I have put? 5G of 5, f of 5, g prime of 5, f prime of 5, and my answers would have been up here, negative 3, 1, 6, 2, whatever. So that's just a table. So just remember, we love tables, we love graphs, they make our, make our life easy. So I'm trying to figure out f times g of u. So the first thing I'm going to do is write my equation. So f times g prime of x would be equal to the derivative of the first. So f prime times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. So then I just plug that in. If we're doing f times g prime of five, then that becomes f prime of five times g of five plus g prime of five times f of five. And then I just plug those numbers in. f prime of five is six, g of five is negative three, plus g prime of five is two, and f of five is one. So that becomes negative 18 plus 2, which is negative 16. And to connect back, I've written it, I've typed it out for you for those of us who are still struggling. I've got one more example. And here, again, the first thing I should do is evaluate the derivative without the numbers. So I should figure out what h prime of x is. So here's my first, here's my second. So the derivative of the first is going to be f prime of x minus the derivative of four. Well, the derivative of four is a constant, so it's just zero. Times the original second plus the derivative of the second, so the derivative of two is zero, but the derivative of this negative five is a constant multiple, so I'm gonna bring that through times my original first. Now I'm ready to plug in h prime of five, and that becomes f prime of five, times two minus five of g of five plus negative five times g prime of five times f of five minus four. And then I would just plug in those numbers. And so this is six and this is two minus five times negative three and then negative five times two times one minus four. And I would evaluate, but technically if this was an AP question, if it was, this was a free response, you would have finished right there. If it was a multiple choice, you would have to figure out all of this. If you had a calculator, you plug it into a calculator. If you didn't have a calculator, you would simply uh, add, multiply, subtract, whatever you'd have to do to get your end answer. And I went ahead and wrote that end answer in here for you. Now, Numeric example number two, it's the exact same thing. I still have to figure out m prime, but how did I know that? Because we're going to connect back to another AP concept, finding equations of the line tangent and normal. And what do we know about tangent lines? All we need is x, y, and your slope, and my slope is my derivative. And if we're finding the normal, then we just find the negative reciprocal, the perpendicular slope. Okay, so I already know x, it's 1. 
I could evaluate y, that's going to be m of 1, and then here, this is going to be m prime of 1, and then yours, that's going to be negative opposite, so I'll write that in. Okay, so then all I'd have to do is figure that out, right? m of 1 is going to be 2 thirds times p of 1 times q of 1, plug that in, Okay, then m prime of 1, or x, sorry, let's evaluate the, the equation first, would be that 2 thirds, and again, this is a constant multiple attached to my p. So 2 thirds is part of this original first term. So 2 thirds p, so p prime of x times q of x plus the, the derivative of this, the second times the original first, so 2 thirds p of x. And then we plug that in. m prime of 1 is equal to 2 thirds p prime of 1, which is this right here, negative 4, times q of 1, which is 11, plus q prime of 1, which is 18, times 2 thirds times p of 1, which is 12. And this is 4, so this is actually 8. And this is, can't be simplified. So then you would do whatever you could to solve for this and get your answer. And just for sake of time, I'm going to do all the algebraic solves right here, or the numeric solves, like they'll just the number solves. So here we got m prime was going to be 344 over 3, and the actual m of 1 was 264 over 3. So that means I know x equals 1. I know y equals 264 over 3. I know m, uh, my slope is going to be at 1, is going to be 344 over 3. So if I know this, I also know m of n, because I'm going to flip this and change its sign. So now I can write my tangent line equation. y minus 264 over 3 is equal to 344 over 3 times x minus 1. And I can write the slope of my tangent line, or the normal line, because it's the exact same thing, and all I change out is the slope. So y minus 264 over 3 is equal to negative 3 over 344 times x minus 1. So there's my tangent. There's my normal line. Okay. And the final numeric I wanted to show you is, is actually written in a table, and I want you guys to pause and do this. And if the, what I want you to do is I want you to first evaluate what h prime of x is, get the equation, then solve for h prime of negative 2 plug it in and get an answer. And I, I think I have the answer written in, so I hope you pause, do the work, and then look at your example. So pause, and here's your answer. Okay, so let's move on to graphical examples. Okay, so just like a table, we should be happy when we have a graph. Unfortunately, like a table, we don't have our points yet, so I have to take a moment to plot out these points. So. The first thing I'm going to do is actually identify what are those points. What would my table have consisted of? Well, we would need to know g of x. We would also need to know g prime of x. Why am I saying x? My bad. That's a lie. We need to know g of negative 3, and we need to know g prime of negative 3. We need to know f of negative 3, and we need to know f prime of negative 3. So g of negative 3 and f of negative 3, those are easy. I simply go to my graph. I look for x equals negative 3. And look, those two values are negative 2. And they happen to be the same, which is nice. That's a nice, easy point for us. So it's negative 2 and negative 2. But if I need my slope, if I need my derivative, then I have to look at the graph and I have to look for something. And I just said the word, but that's okay, because this is going to remind us my derivative is my slope. My slope is my derivative. Say it forward. Say it backwards. Say it a hundred times, because I'm going to make you say it in class a million times. When you have a graph and it's trying to ask you for a derivative, you can't tell me, oh, I don't have that information. You do have that information. You have to evaluate the slopes of those points. So for my G, which is the graph in black, for my g, I figure out the slope of this line, which is up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So it's positive 1. For my f, I'm going to look for the slope of this line, which is negative 1. So I'm going to write those in, 1 and negative 1. I take a second and evaluate what h prime of x would be, and that would be the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. So I plug those in. Uh, for h prime of 1, that's going to be g prime of 1. Sorry, not 1, negative 3. G prime of negative 3, so that's going to be 1, times f of negative 3 times negative 2, plus f prime of negative 3, which is negative 1, times g of negative 3, which is negative 2. So that's going to become negative 2 
plus positive 2, which is going to equal 0. Here we have another one. So I want you to pause, and I actually want you to do this problem for yourself because you're going to identify h of negative 1. You're going to identify h of h prime of negative 1. You're going to identify, sorry, nope. You're going to identify g of negative 1, and you're going to identify g prime of negative 1. You're going to identify f of negative 1, and you're going to identify f prime of negative 1. Then you can use the same equation I used because that's the same one as last time. But I want you to evaluate for yourself. So take a moment, pause the video, solve it. Okay, coming back, here's your answer. I hope you got the same answer. Now I'm going to solve this one because this one's a little bit funkier. Now again, we need to figure out g of 2. We need to figure out g prime of 2. We need f of 2. And we're going to need to figure out f prime of 2. So I go to my graph and I look at 2. And my f value, my, my g value at 2 is 3, my f value at 2 is negative 4. But we're also going to need their derivatives. So this one's easy. The derivative of this slope is up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. So that's just positive 1 half. But my derivative here, what's going on with this? Ooh, my derivative at this point, I have to find the derivative of a line or of a curve. I didn't know we had to do that. Well, it's actually even simpler than that because the derivative at that point, we're looking right here. What is a derivative? My derivative is the instantaneous rate of change of the tangent line. And what does this tangent line look like? That looks like a horizontal line. So just a reminder, horizontal lines have a slope of zero. So what do you think my derivative is at that point? My derivative at that point is actually going to be zero. So let's write out those values. So g of 2 was 3, f of 2 was negative 4, g prime of 2 we just found out was 0, and f prime of 2 was 1 half. So again, you can evaluate h prime of 2. I expect you to do it because I've given you the original equation in the previous two slides. So pause. And coming on back, here is your answer. And my final one, uh, again, all we have to do is evaluate what is g of 4, what is f of 4, what is g prime of 4, and what is f prime of 4. So I go and I look, and I'm looking at my positive 4, and here I can see it exists that it's my g of 4 is 1, my f of 4 is negative 3, my f prime of 4 is the same slope, positive 1 half, and my g prime of 4, oh, what's happening here? I have to evaluate this slope. And how do I evaluate the slope of a vertical line? Oh, wait, I shouldn't, I can't, it's, it's a funky point, because isn't that one of our differentiability no-nos, right? A function cannot be differentiable if you have a corner, a cusp, or a vertical tangent, and this is my vertical tangent. So what does that mean? It means that this answer is D and E because G prime does not exist at four. So my answer is D and E, and I hope that you recognize our points of differentiability. Just to pause and think about that for a second to connect back, I also have differentiability that can't exist at these endpoints, of course, and at this corner cusp and at this corner right here. Okay. So I know this is a longer video, so I've got some algebraic examples followed by some trick. I'm going to go as quickly as I possibly can. So hang in there. Make it through with me. Watch 2.7 and 2.8 and be prepared for this lesson. So here we have an algebraic example. Now I'm going to show you a different style. It's the same concept, different style method. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create my line going down and we're going to pair them up. So I've got u, u prime, v, and v prime. Now, if I always write it in this order, guess what happens? We're going to pair the inner, and then we're going to pair the outer. It's going to be as simple as that. So my u is the first term, so that's the cube root of t, which we actually know is equal to t to the one-third. So that derivative is one-third t to the one-third minus three-thirds, so negative two-thirds. v is equal to t squared plus four. That's this part right here. So its derivative is 2t. So now I pair the inside, so f prime of t would be equal to one-third t to the negative two-thirds times t squared plus four, plus I pair the outside, t to the one-third times two t. It's as simple as that. Let's do another problem. Again, u, u prime, v, 
V prime. And does it matter if I'm using these letters? No, I could have picked different letters. Um, we'll go ahead and do different letters. Let's do uh, M, M prime, N, N prime. It doesn't matter as long as you're picking letters that you recognize. So this is the square root of S, which we know is S to the one half. The derivative of that is one half s to the negative one half. I hope this is one you've memorized at this point. The square root of x should be on your memorization list. We use it often. So four minus s squared. Uh, so this four is gonna zero out, but the negative is not. So negative two s. So now I just pair the inner. So that plus pair the outer. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So now if I had to plug in a number, because this is these are our algebraics, once we've done this, you literally just plug in your number. So if it was g prime of 4, then I would take 4 and plug it in every time that I saw that, every time I saw that letter S. That's it. It's just like evaluating any other function. Okay. So here we have another one, and this time I'm going to use F and G's just to show y'all these letters don't matter. It's the concepts that matter because this is the first, this is the second. That's all you're trying to do. So my first is 3x squared. My derivative of that is 6x. My second is 5x plus 1. The derivative of that is 5. So H prime would be equal to inner plus outer. Again, patterns, we're just creating patterns and recognizing them. A little bit funkier one, so I want to make sure I do this so you guys have exposure to as many as I can give you. Okay, so the derivative of this would become negative 2u to the negative 3 plus that negative 3 is going to come down u to the negative 4, and then this one is going to be 5u to the 4th, and that negative two carries, oops, uh, that negative two carries, so this is actually gonna be four u. So, inner, I'm gonna go ahead and distribute this. Plus the outer. Okay, so let's move on to some trig examples. Now I know that this is a little bit harder because y'all are having trouble recalling and remembering our six trigs. And again, I'll just remind you, of these six trigs, you really just have to do rote memorization. I can't help you with that except to just remind you, memorize, 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 memorize. But if you want to follow a trick, all I'm going to memorize are the first three. So the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of secant is secant x tan x. And the derivative of tan is secant squared. When I was in high school, I just remembered sine, cosine, or inverses. Secant repeats, so secant x tan x. And tan squared, so tan becomes secant squared. I don't know if that will help you, but it helped me. But why did I separate these out? Because these are all of our cos, right? This is cosine. This is cosecant. This is cotangent. So that means these are all going to be negative and opposite. I didn't say reciprocal because some of them are reciprocals, but some are not. So that's why I didn't say reciprocal. So the derivative of cosine is going to become negative, And then I look over here. What's the opposite? Sine. So negative sine. Then the derivative of cosine is going to be negative, And I look over here. And for this one, we are going to do their reciprocals. Negative cosecant no, and, and, and cotangent. Now, again, for cotangent down here, it's going to be negative, and I look over here. So it's going to be negative cosecant squared x. So if that helped you, it helped you. Otherwise, no these. Memorize these. So let's do a few examples with them. Again, I'm just going to go down the row. F, F would be 6x. F prime would be 6. G would be sine x. The derivative of that is cosine x. So I pair my inside. Plus, I pair my outside. And that's it. Next question. So the derivative of my first was 3x squared. The derivative of my second is negative, because it's a co, negative sine x. So then I pair my inside. plus my outside. 
And that's it. It's as easy peasy lemon squeezy. I promise it's not as hard. Now this one is a little bit harder. <laughs> I know I said I promise it's not hard. This one's a little bit harder. Why? Because we're taking the second derivative. So the biggest thing to remember with product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, any of our rules when we talk about derivatives, once we do the first derivative, if we have to take a second derivative, you have to take a moment to evaluate. If I distribute and simplify, is this gonna make the problem easier or harder? So we're gonna have that in this problem right here. So I'm gonna identify this as my first. This is a constant multiple, so I'm gonna keep it there. And I'm gonna identify this as my second. So u would be equal to negative two cosine x, and v would be equal to three x cubed minus five x plus seven. So u prime would be negative two times negative sine x, so it's gonna be a positive two sine x. This is gonna be nine x squared minus five. So I pair my center, and that would be 2 sine x times 3x cubed minus 5x plus 7 plus my outside, negative 2 cosine x times 9x squared minus 5. Now, we're not looking for g prime. We're looking for g double prime. So I take a moment. If I distribute this sine x to all of these terms, does that help me? Well, 3x cubed times sine x squared, sine x, that's another product rule. Each one of these would become its own, or at least these two would become another product rule, and this would be the only one that would be a standalone. Same right here. That would be another product rule. This would be a standalone. So I would end up doing one, two, three product rules, and a standalone and a standalone. So I'd have five different sections to work on. But if I left it, if I left it the way it was and just saw it as another product rule on top of these, then I'm only doing two different sets. So this is what I mean by you evaluate to figure out which one's gonna be easier. So this is easy to just see as here's a product of the first and the second. Here's another product, first and second. So I'm gonna do those individually. This u is gonna be two sine x. This u prime is gonna be uh, two cosine x. This v is 3x cubed minus 5x plus 7, and we already know its v prime is 9x squared minus 5. Down here, this u is negative 2 cosine x, so this u prime is actually going to be positive 2 sine x. This v is 9x squared minus 5, so this v prime is going to be 18x. So I do each of these little bitty individuals. So the derivative, so we do g double prime, would be equal to, here's my inner, and I ruined some stuff there, my bad. Okay, not a race, that's okay. So here's my inner, and that's going to be 2 cosine x times 3x cubed minus 5x plus 7 plus my outer. So 2 sine x times 9x squared minus 5. Okay. And this whole thing is just this first part. So we're still adding because that's this part right here. And now we do the second part. And here's my inner. 2 sine x times 9x squared minus 5 plus my outer which is 18x times negative 2 cosine x. Okay. And so as you can see, this giant piece on bottom would be my g double prime. And usually you have a lot more space to be working instead of the tiny little space I gave myself, but you would have more space to work. You could uh, finish your analysis of the problem at this point, or this is your end answer. Here we have another... Here we have another problem that's a second derivative, so I hope that you take a moment and do this one on your own. So I am going to help you out. Your u should be 7x. Your v, I don't know why I was going to write a g, should be cosine x. So you have to figure out u prime. You have to figure out v prime. Then you have to figure out what y prime is and what y double prime is. So make sure you work on this problem. Okay, so some closure on this. Always evaluate your derivative first, then apply the numeric solves. As you can see, I did that constantly. I always did the full equation, and then I plugged in my numbers. Make sure you do it that way, because you could end up solving for a function instead of a derivative. Okay, here's that uh, 
notation for you, the derivative of u times v is u prime v plus v prime u. But how do I want you to remember that? I want you to remember it as this right here, the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. So say that sentence a hundred times in your head before you come see me next time. Okay, so I will see, whoa, crazy eye. I will see you guys in class. Make sure you watch video 2.7 and video 2.8.